we want to talk about how a UI framework works using my UI framework as an example, but I want to talk about it in general as well. So, sort of like how we did the how databases work. We'll try to explain how GUIs work. Okay. First thing I want to describe is actually as as a implementer of a GUI, what what layer are you using to make your GUI work? I think there's two separate things. One one is the graphics layer. Mm -hmm. So I'll call this the lower layer, as in the the GUI is a higher layer. It is a definitely an abstraction, as as we talked mm -hmm. about in the leaky abstractions episodes. A GUI is a very big abstraction, actually. It's trying to give you this illusion that you have these UI components that you can combine and do different things. When there is an abstraction, it's trying to hide a lower layer. So what are the lower layer? There's a graphics layer, and there's the uh, user events, mm -hmm. keyboard, mouse, others so so yeah. i would call these two things the the two lower layers that i'm programming against and when i'm saying the graphics layer you can think of something like the html5 canvas api mm -hmm. where 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 you're allowed to draw things you can say draw a line you can say draw a rectangle draw ellipse uh, draw, draw an image. If you have an image file, you can draw that under the screen. Can I, see, can I see these two layers are as input and output? I mean, the graphics layer is the output is whatever you want to render and the user event, uh, any event is input. Yeah, very, very true. Yes. So the graphics is output, user events is input. So um, the graphics layer yeah, has this kind of API where you, you fill a rectangle with green, and then there's the rectangle, mm -hmm. that that kind of thing. And you can look up their API. They they have a, actually very good tutorials. Like this is a fill text allows you to draw text on the canvas. And if you have an image, you can make a new image, and you can say draw the image at this location of the canvas. Qt has a similar API called the Q Painter, and I've been looking into it. So it has very, very similar methods. Draw a point, draw a point, draw a line, draw a rectangle, et cetera. It's, it's very similar in style to the Canvas API. So I call this the graphics layer. If mm -hmm. you are doing more low-level graphics, there's OpenGL. OpenGL is the standard for uh, drawing graphics on a computer. Game developers tend to use this. So this this is the lower level uh, graphics API for the computer, as in Windows ships with OpenGL, Mac ships with OpenGL. Mm -hmm. And OpenGL is an API that's designed to allow you to access the graphics hardware on your computer. It, because a lot of computers nowadays ship with a graphics CPU, a GPU. Mm -hmm. which is a separate processor that's dedicated for doing calculations for graphics before they're drawn onto your screen so that everything can be faster. Like even if you have a lot of animations going on your screen, they can be fast because there's a separate computer that's helping you do calculations for the graphics before it goes onto the screen. And OpenGL mm -hmm. gives you access to that graphics hardware. It has a bit of a learning curve, but um, you know, if you really care about rendering performance, you, you need to know this. So those are some examples of graphics layers. Uh, in my case, I use the terminal. <laughs> so my situation is quite different because it's all based on characters. I'm just drawing characters on the terminal. I, I can tell it to draw characters in certain color or with a certain background color. And I can yeah. use weird Unicode characters that help me, that help me draw the things the way I want to draw. And, and that's basically 
what I'm dealing with. So do you see like kind of each character as a pixel? Yes, exactly. I, I see a character as a pixel. This pose is one of the best for learning terminal programming. So an example is if you want to print the word hollow world red, then you just put this control code in front of it. And this 31 means red. In addition to just color, there are control code to move your cursor anywhere on the screen. So if you want to draw a box, you just move this cursor to, you move it to the top left corner and then you draw a line. And then you move the cursor and draw the next parts of the box, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I'm dealing with as the graphics layer. Okay, so the event is, in Canvas, you're just using the DOM event and in Qt, Qt has an event system, and you just learn Qt's event system. Um, and OpenGL, I'm not sure exactly how they do that, uh, but probably in each one, there's a cross-bonding event library. So, so like uh, HTML events, Qt events. I don't know how OpenGL does events. In the terminal, um, we have actually access to mouse events. It's an extension of the terminal protocol. I have to send a special control code. I have this mouse on function. And what it does is send this weird control code to the terminal. And then that mm -hmm. tells that, uh, or not mouse motion on, I'm not using that. There's also mouse motion, which tracks your mouse move movement. I'm actually not using that yet, but the mouse on just tells the terminal when they click, send me the click event. I think that the first terminal that added this capability is Xterm. So some of this stuff I learned from, on NPM, there's a thing called Terminal Kit, which is a, which is like a terminal-based library that's written in Node.js. And I just looked at their source code and I learned a bunch of stuff from it. So that's one thing I do. And and then they 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 were nice to put in a lot of links to the resources that they use to build this thing. So that linked linked me to other things that were helpful. So Xterm is a protocol that supports some of these things. And I could read more about how the protocols work. One thing I would say is you if you're if you're planning to build like an ambitious abstraction like this you should get to learn your lower layer well you really want to learn how the lower layer works so since i feel like the canvas and the qt uh painter has a higher level apis uh because in terminal you don't have uh the api say draw a line or draw uh -huh. you, you, you can draw a string you can Right. In the, terminal, in the terminal, basically, that's what you have. You, you have print a string. Right. Uh, and, and then if you want to print a string at a particular location, like over here, you say, move the cursor over here and then print the string. Right. So to me, that's like more basic. Than yeah, it's, it's lower level, but. <laughs> draw rectangle stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. So if you want to create like a terminal version of Canvas, you need to write all these methods yourself. I didn't feel the need to That's true. make an API that has these things. Uh, I'll, I'll show you my Canvas. My, mm -hmm. my, my Canvas is basically the region. Mm -hmm. uh, every widget draws things through the region. Mm -hmm. And the region makes sure you don't draw out of the boundary that you're supposed to draw onto as well. Mm -hmm. So it's got these checks here, but the, the API of region, the, the ones you use to draw are just draw and clear rect. That's it. Mm -hmm. These are the only drawing APIs. So you, you draw, you draw a string at a particular p position. You can clear out a rectangle defined by the location of the rectangle and size of the rectangle. That was enough for me to build everything I needed so far. In a terminal, it doesn't really make much sense to say draw a circle. So everything has to be rectangles. So, so I, I think just because I have a lot of limitations of what I can do, 
my job also ends up being simpler. Although I, I did manage to do rounded rectangles. <laughs> and and I, I did that using uh, Unicode characters. So, so do you have like a method to draw the rectangle? Is that like part of the API? You I have just, I just, just the code that draws a rounded oh. rectangle. Okay. Like, I just go through a loop and draw, draw, draw the little bar on the left side, draw the little bar on the right side, and then at the bottom, the, there's a little rounded corner and a bar and another rounded corner. Nice. I mean, and <laughs> there's not even that much code to do that, right? And, and then <laughs> before I do that, clear out the rectangle, erase what's there before. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, just, just do it. <clears throat> This could be extracted into a method, but I just didn't feel the need to at this point. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like what we talked to Jason about this. Like, if you don't feel like it's painful, then you don't need to extract anything. Okay. I, I don't have a lot of situations where I'm drawing a border. It's, it's just a window class. So that is that's the lower layer graphics. And, and sort of that shows you the problem you're up against i think it's like okay this is what i have to work with i can draw stuff i can draw shapes on the screen i can receive events and when, when it's a mouse event you receive x y coordinates right if if it's a keyboard event you receive like the key character or the key code mm -hmm. uh, so 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 when you when you lay it out like this it, it shows you what you're up against these are the APIs you're going to code against. And then what API are you going to present to your consumer? Mm -hmm. um, that's something for you to design. Um, but, but we have a lot of examples out there that we can learn from and steal ideas from. You can steal those ideas or, or you can, you know, if you want to be adventurous, you can say, I want to do something completely different from what they are doing.